what is human resource requirements human resource forecasting is the process of predicting demand and supply whether it's number of employees or types of skills that they are needed and available to get the job done basically forecasting requirements technique includes yearly sales or product production projection what is demand forecasting in supply chain demand forecasting is a supply chain management refers to the process of planning or predicting the demand of a material to ensure you can drive the right product and it's the right quantity to satisfy customers demand without creating a surplus forecast error can result in creating a surplus which is both wasteful and costly why is forecasting demand important in supply chain the demand forecasting is important to study the supply chain because it is the process by which the strategy or operational stages are derived things of it as underlying hypothesis for strategic management business activities and the starting point of for most supply chain process like raw material planning purchase inbound logistics cash flow and manufacturing demand forecasting also facilitates critical business activities like financial planning production planning risk assessment and the purchase of raw material most importantly forecasting accuracy enables reta- retailers to avoid stock out and overstock improves production lead times minimize costs increases operational efficiency and improves the customer's experience to improve the productivity organization needs better employees with skills and potential productivity leads to grow but depends on the demands for the product for the en- enterprises in the market higher demand may leads to more employment for skillful personals how does demand forecasting work we have thrown a lot of information you can very quickly but sales forecasting is a little more than the useful of sales data from the past to determine consumer customer demands in the future the process can be broken down into quantitative and qualitative forecasting both of which really on different resources and the data set to explore useful sales data the quantitative forecasting method is useful when there is existing historical sales data on a specific product and a pre established demand it requires the use of mathematical formulations and a data set like financial report sales revenue figures and website analytics the qualitative method on the other hand relies on emerging technologies pricing and the availability changes product life cycle product upgrades and most importantly the in- intuitions and experience of those planning forecasting demand forecasting techniques within the sphere of a qualitative and quantitative forecasting there are several different methods you can use to predict demands collective opinion when leverages the knowledge and experience of the company's sales team to aggregate historical data on the customer's demand customer survey method which provides key information on the customer's experience desire and needs this data is useful for creating sales forecasts but is harder to predict actual demand the barometric method which involves using economical indicators to predict trends and measures current past future activities the experts opinion method which involves sociolytic experts advice from external contractors to determine future activities the market experiment method which utilizes the market experiments carried out under a controlled condition to inform retailers on a consumer behaviors the statistical method which allows a companies to identify and analyze the relationship between different variables establish performance history over time identify trends and expo- extrapolate potential future trends how to forecast demand demand forecast is valuable to all business but is particularly useful to e-commerce brands and retailers where accurate forecasting and support inventory method management efforts and improves the customer's experience but knowing how to approach something as a complex 
as forecasting accuracy for an e-commerce store is so, is so task fortunately there are some tried tried and true strategic that can make the process easier collect the right data for your demand forecast to be successful you must ensure that you have the right kind of data to make informed business decisions it is important to home in on the number that given you the information you need to make decisions like pricing trends and how many people visited on your sales channel in a given time frame try not to focus on your business data collections effort on a complete product line it is better to concentrate on the product and categories that earns you the most income or the most popular with the customers document sales and demand trends whichever matrix you choose you will need a repeatable data analysis process that accurate despite whether the forecast is getting better or worse points to items that need the important most improvement measurable accuracy at your procurement leads time and product provides accurate information by customers branch branch product and categories budget purchase and allocate accordingly accordingly once you once your demand forecasting is in a place that only things left is to utilize your collected data to draw up the strategy for how where and when to allocate your resources and purchase efforts what is demand and supply forecasting factors and methods demand forecasting demand forecasting is a quantitative aspect of a human resource planning it is the process of estimating the future requirements of a human resource of all kind and types of organizations factors first one forecasting of a demand for a human resource depends upon the certain factors such as employment trends in the organization for at least 5 years to be tracked to determine the future needs organization has to find out the replacement needs due to retirements death recognitions and terminations etc improvement in the productivity is yet another factor to improve the productivity organizations need better employees with skills and potentials productivity leads to grow the but depends on the demand for the product of an enterprise in the market higher demand may lead to make employment of a personal skilled personals expansion of organization leads to higher of more skilled persons the base of human resource forecast is a annual budget manufacturing plants depends upon the de- budget expansion in the production leads to more higher of skill and technologies methods of demand forecasting there are three major methods of demand forecasting they are executive judgment the executive judgment or a managerial judgment method is the most suitable for a small enterprise because they do not afford to have work study techniques under this method the executives sit together and determine the future manpower requirements of an enterprise and submits the proposal to the top management for approvals this approach is known as bottom up approach sometimes the member of a top management sits together and determines the need on the advice of a personal department the forecast so prepared sent for a review to the departmental heads and af- after that consult approved the need this is known as top down approach the best way is the combination of two approach is executives are both level picured ex- 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 and with guidelines sit together and determines the human resource need of the organizations second thing is workload forecasting it is also a workload analysis under this method the stock of workload and the continuity of operations are determined according to the labor requirements is determined the workload becomes the base of a workforce analysis for the forthcoming years here due consideration is given in the absenteeism and labor turnovers this method is also known as work study techniques here working capacity of each employee is calculated in a term man hours man hours requires for each unit is calculated and then the number of 
requirements employees is calculated for example planned or annual production is 2 lakhs units the standard man hour requirements for each unit is 2 hours planned man hour need for a year is 4 hours planned annual contribution of employees is considered to be at 2000 hours now the employee requirements is done by the planned man hour need for a year divided by planned num annual contribution of an employee that is 4 lakhs hard divided by 2 lakhs hard that is 200 this method is useful to long term forecasting strategical techniques long range demand forecasting for a human resource is more responsible to strategical method techniques which the which that with help of a computer any data is rapidly analyzed the following are the methods of forecasting under this categories ratio trend analysis under this method the ratios are calculated for a past data related to number of employees of each categories that is production sales marketing level and workload level future production and sales level workload activities levels are estimated with the allowances of changing in operational organization methods and jobs the future ratios are estimated then the future human resource requirements is calculated on the basis of established ratio this method is easy to understand values depend upon the accuracy of our data econometric method econometric method are built upon the basis of analysis of past strategical data establishing the relationship between variables in the mathematical formula the variable are those factors such as production sales finance and other activities affecting the human resource requirements econometric method is used to forecast human resource requirements based on the variable variance regression analysis regression analysis is used to forecast demand for human resource at some point of time in future by using factors such as sales production service product etc this method is used for independent and dependent variables or functionally related to each other nowadays computers are used to solve regression e- equations for demand forecast supply forecasting supply forecasting means to make an estimation of a supply of a human resource taking into consideration the analysis of a current human inter- inter- inventories and future availabilities existing inventories the first step in supply forecasting is to take a stock existing hr inventories as follows head count head count of a total number of people available depend wise gender wise designation wise skill wise payroll wise etc job family inventories they consist to number and categories of employees of each job families that is the job related to some categories like office staff sales and marketing staff production staff maintenance and industrial engineers and quality control engineers etc age inventories it ex- it consists of age wise number and categories of employees this gives us age composition of human resource dimensions creativity creativity availability in innovativeness is present in young employees which makes of proper judgment and displays in source by elderly employees organizations prefers both young and old employees human resource planning should give both consideration to age wise human resource mixing young and old employees in due proportions inventories of skills experience values and capabilities organizations should take a stock of present inventories of a skill employees with number of year experience values and capabilities inventories of qualification and training this consider this consist of educational qualifications of employees academic and technical and specific qualifications if any and the training received by employees inventories of sales grades this includes pay and allowances wise and total wise stock talking gender wise inventories inventories of male and female employees of the organizations is considered local and non local wise inventories 
it includes the stock of local employees and the employees belong to other areas such as different state of india inventories of past performance and future potential potentialities there are several human capacities or potential requirements of a performing jobs at a workplace requirements of these alone experience need to take into consideration while taking stock of human resource management L- labor wastage labor wastage should be taken into account while making future forecast and f- find out the reason of people leaving the organization actions can be taken to uh, arrest the labor wastage and replacement of uncontrollable losses human resource manager must know how to make wastage analysis for measuring permanent total loss due to the labor the follow labor turnover formula is used labor turnover rate is equal to number of employees left specifically period exactly says one year average number of employees during the year into 100 human resource manager how to calculate the rate of labor turnover conduct exit interviews etc this helps them fo- forecast the rate of potential loss cause of loss etc this step can be taken to reduce losses human resource manager can calculate labor stability index by using the formula given below labor stability index is equal to number of employees with one year service or more divided by number of employees one year ago into 100 by knowing all this labor instability can be arrested and labor turnover can be minimized the potential loss can be specifically classified as a permanent total loss permanent pa- partial loss temporary total loss and temporary partial loss let us analyze these losses permanent loss permanent total loss is due to death voluntary quit requirements dim- dimensions and promotion out and demotions or transfer outs this can be f- filled in a new required promotions in the transfer in permanent partial loss permanent partial loss is due to sum of skill potential and capability due to ill health or accident if get recruit of loss organizations can require new skills knowledge values and aptitudes among the existing employees by providing adequate necessary trainings temporary total loss temporary total loss is due to loss of aptitudes values changes in outlook and aptitude of existing employees to get their jobs departments and organizations also absenteeism is also a reason for this this can be prevented by taking steps to minimize absenteeism to forecast loss of human resource due to it aptitude of employee towards organization can be improved by knowing the cause of changing and making effort to remove these causes temporary potential loss this temporary potential loss is due to consultant or advice offered by the employees of organization to other this loss of organization has labor has to be there because many organization encourages this practice as their revenue to the organizations also if they think of a revenue obtained by the organization these will loss to some extent in substance but these organizations not claiming for the fees or com- commission received by the employees this loss is consignable after forecasting potential loss potential additionals are also being taken into account potential additions potential added to the present inventories of human resource minimizes the impact of potential losses potential additionals or following steps permanent total permanent partial additions temporary total additions temporary additions the permanent total or additions are due to the new recruitments promotions grants to juniors transfers effects from the one department to another permanent partial additions these consist of acqu- acquisitions of new skills knowledge by the pers- present employees this will increase the stock of human resource in the organization temporary total additions 
These consist of deputations of employees from one organization to other. This will temporarily make additions to the stock of human resources. Internal factors. Internal source of supply of human resource includes the output from established trained program for employees and management development programs for existing executives and the existing reservoirs of skills, potential, creativity, ability of the organization. The external factors. External factors can be grouped into local and national factors. Local factors. Local factors include the following. Population densities within the reach of enterprises. Current and future wages and salary structures for other employees. Local unemployment levels. Availability of employees on part-time, temporary and casual basis. The output for the local educational institutions and training institutions managed by the government and private establishments. Local transports and communication factors. Availability of residential facilities. Traditional patterns of employees locally and availabilities of human resource with requisite qualification skills. The pattern of migration and immigrations. The attraction of areas as better place to reside. The attraction of companies as better workplace and company as a good pay masters. The, the residential factors, educational health, transport facilities. The regulations of local government is in respect of reservation of backward and minority communities. These are the local factors. National factor. National factor includes the following. Trends in growth of working population of the country. National demand for certain categories of human resource such as technical and management professionals, computer professionals, medical practitioners, technicians, securities, secretaries, craftsmen, graduates, etc. The output of universities, technical and professional institutes. Impact of changing in educational patterns. Cultural patterns, social norms and customs. Impact of government training schemes. Impact of government policies in repeat respect of employment regulations. Migration and immigration patterns. Impact of national educational factors. The net human resource requirements depend upon the human resource requirements of the organization for future. That is, demand forecasting and total supply of human resources available. These are the requirements of human resource management. Thank you.